Welcome to the Chainsaw Porting Class Series. We are porting a Homelite Super XL Auto. Uh, they are cheap to get and it's a good saw to learn to grind on for your first time. Uh, it saves you from having to spend a ton of money on an expensive saw and then trying to figure out how to learn how to do this and you know you, do, you don't want to mess things up so it's it's just a cheap alternative to start learning how to get in there and do some grinding and you can see your changes you know now if you're interested in this project i suggest going back to the first video i'll put a link to the whole playlist down in the description just go on back there and uh check out the other videos all righty so today we're going to be getting into our timing wheel or should I say the degree wheel. Now, this is the degree wheel I'm going to be using. You can pick them up cheap on eBay, but you can always just print them out. You can see I've used this one a bit. Uh, I like these paper ones because you can write right on them. Uh, I used to use these exclusively, but I did recently switch to one of these and you know, it works good too, but don't be afraid to just print one out, glue it to some cardboard, and use it, you know? Uh, all you do is you put a hole on it in order to mount these. All you do is you gotta put a hole on it. And instead of going out and buying a bunch of fancy stuff, you can simply just put a flat washer on either side of the crankshaft here. This is where the flywheel bolts up. So you could put a flat washer on either side, shove this on, Put a nut on there to hold it. You just got to be very careful not to bump it as you're working. You know what I mean? Because um, it'll you, you could turn it. Now, I've done this method. I've also done a method where I put a bolt in here that was threaded the same as the crankshaft. What I did is I ran the nut on about halfway up the crankshaft, about half the nut up on the crankshaft, and the other half was on my bolts and I would just crank it down real tight. You know, it worked. Um, it just helped me on situations where I didn't have room here and I had to move it out further, okay? Um, now, this is what I'm gonna be using. It's a half inch drill chuck. Okay, you don't need to go do this. Uh, actually, when I give a, a shout out to Tin Man, uh, I've never even heard of this method until he said about it. And a viewer from the channel ended up going and picking one up and sending it to me without me even knowing. So I ended up with a surprise in the mail one day. Uh, his name is Doug. So uh, if you'd like, you can post a comment there and say, thanks, Doug, for the drill chuck. But this is what I'm going to use. It's pretty simple. We've got a wing nut here. We got these washers, see how? These washers really lock it into place. But all you do is you put it on the crankshaft. Once I, uh, I drop my washer, I put it on the crankshaft. And I don't know if you guys know this, but anytime you're working with a drill chuck, you don't just tighten it up with one hole. Just work your way around and do a little bit off of each hole. It gives you a, uh, a snugger fit, if you know what I mean. Now you don't want to crank down on this a whole lot, okay? Just get it on there snug, easily turns the crankshaft. Then, the next thing I want to do is I need to take a piece of wire I need to take this wire and mount it to the engine. This is going to be a pointer, okay? Now, when we mount this, we don't want to mount it to the cylinder because we're going to be bolt unbolting the cylinder later here. We want to build, bolt it on down here close to the crankshaft. So I got, I'm sure I got laying here somewhere, a bolt that I can use. There we go. So I got a nice little loop there for my screw. I'm just gonna stick it on here. 
use a screwdriver to tighten it up. Now I gotta mount my timing or my degree weld. Washer on each side and then the wing nut to hold it. I always try to get top dead center facing up, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't. You can have it facing straight down. As long as your pointer and you know that it, that's top dead center, you're good to go. You just gotta remember that stuff. I just like to have a facing in the same direction that I'm working, or straight to the top, just because it's easier reference, if you know what I mean. Now I'm gonna snug this up pretty good. That way, if when I want to, all I gotta do is grab a hold of the wing nut and turn it. Nothing moves. Okay, that, that allows me to turn the entire crankshaft assembly right off of this wing nut. It works pretty good. So I think uh, I think this is a good moment to uh, give a shout out to Tin Man. See, Tin Man is doing one of these How to Porter Chainsaw series as well. He's doing a piston ported engine. So if you're not familiar with Tin Man, I strongly suggest going over and watching his series. He's doing piston ported and I'm doing a reed saw. The difference between those two, piston ported are easier. It's just, these are, these are just, they're cheap saws. You can pick them up anywhere. It's something good to grind on for your first time because you'd, you'd hate to mess up a 500 plus dollar saw, you know what I mean? So these are a good one to start on. Start on your cheap, you know what I mean? Something, your first grinding, start on something cheap. Uh, if you find a cheap piston ported saw, by all means, follow his series and get to work on it. You know what I mean? Um, just remember, we are working on home lights. Reed saws. Reed saws, don't get crazy with them. It takes a lot of knowledge to really turn those RPMs up. They don't operate the same as a piston ported engine. Okay, so we're just building a, we're just taking an average firewood saw, one of the most common firewood saws to have ever been made, and we're just gonna make it better. All right, and you're gonna be able to copy what I do along the way. But by all means, make sure you get over there and watch Tin Man. He's got a lot of good information he's sharing with you. All right. Now, I gotta find top dead center. What? I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna flip the phone around because that camera's a little better quality. All right, so now I need to figure out top dead center. See the uh, piston moving there? When it's all the way to the top, we're at top dead center. When it's all the way at the bottom, we're at bottom dead center, all right? Top dead center, bottom dead center. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it up there to where I stop moving, okay? Now I wanna look at my degree wheel and show you. Let me move my camera again for you. So can you see my degree wheel? So top dead center on degree wheel is actually to the right there. I wanna adjust that. I want it to be facing up. So I'm gonna loosen this up, turn it up to the top and lock it down. Now I'm gonna get my pointer somewhat situated to about zero, just somewhere in there. We're not getting it exact just yet. All right, so now we gotta get true dot top dead center. Now what we gotta do here is I'm gonna show you a method in which I use. And that is to use a piston stop. But I'm gonna assume none of you have a piston stop. I'm sure this might be your first time. So I'm trying to think of what I could use as a piston stop. All right, I'm just gonna use this old ink pen. 
as a piston piston stop. I'm just gonna stick it in the hole until it hits the side. And as I turn the piston, it hits the ink pen. You can see the, the ink pen kind of moving a little bit. Okay, that's what we're gonna piston do. stop. And if you look, the piston hits the pen on the way up. All right. Pistons. Now we're going to find true dead center. Okay. So there, in that direction, we are sitting at 65 degrees. Let's turn it the other direction and see where it hits. There it hits at 90 degrees. So, each of these lines is a degree increment. And you can see you got from 80 to 90 here is a 10 degree increment. The halfway point is five. And then you got one, two, three, four in between. Okay. Now, if you're reading clockwise, you're going after top dead center or after bottom dead center. If you're reading counterclockwise, then you go before bottom dead center or before top dead center. It's as simple as that. So clockwise is after, counterclockwise is before. All right. So let's go ahead and figure this out here. That's all we're going to do is we're just going to adjust the wire. Okay. Now, let's try it again. We are at 73 degrees. Let's turn it the other way. And we are at 81. We need to go a little further. We need to split those. Let's set it at 79 degrees. Let's go this direction. So we are at 75 degrees. Need to go a little further. I'm at about 77 and a half there. I'm about 76 there. So let's go one more degree. Okay. We got that at 77. Seventy, seven and a half. So we're real close. Okay. That's just a hair over 77 degrees. And that is just a hair over 77 degrees. So right there would be how we find true top set center. In case you're wondering, I'm 77 degrees this direction. And I turn it back the other way. And this I'm reading counterclockwise to 77. It's because I'm turning each direction. See what I'm talking about? Got clockwise to 77 degrees after top dead center. Then I'm going to go around the other way to 77 degrees before top dead center. So that should put us at exactly. Once we pour piston stop out, we go right up here to top dead center, and that should put us at exactly top dead center. Exactly. So now, the next step is to start timing this, okay? We're going to use a flashlight. We're going to shine it down, and we want to see the first moment of light inside of here but we want to turn it in the direction the engine rotates okay so when this engine we turn counterclockwise okay this is counterclockwise so we want to turn counterclockwise until we see the first moment of light in the exhaust port
Okay, can you see the first amount of light? Can you see it coming through right here? You see it? That's the first ray of light. I need to count this off. And this will be after top dead center. Okay, so top dead center is way down here out of view. All right, so we got top dead center down here. It's at zero. You can see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Now, as you can see, the numbers start going backwards as we go past 90. So we're going to count these off um, by increments. We're going to go 90. We know this one's 95. This one here would be 100. Then we got 1, 2, 3 degrees after 100. So we're at 103 degrees. All right. That's actually not a bad number. Now, we got a notepad here, remember that? We wrote our squish at our start, and we wrote our compression start. Well now, we want to write down exhaust is at 103 degrees. Alrighty. So, we got a squish at 87, compression at 130 PSI, and our exhaust is sitting at 103. Now, I don't want you to go any further than that. Not yet. Alrighty. So, till next time, We'll finish getting our measurements and then we'll work at getting the cylinder off and see what improvements we can start doing. Alrighty, until next time, later.